Hello pinstripers, um, welcome back to our little uh, Cambridge pinstriping basics uh, series. Today we're going to go back to basics. But don't worry, I won't go repeat the same shit we did in the first two episodes, because uh, that would be just silly, right? Uh, the beauty of YouTube is you can go back to my channel and rewatch all the videos as many times as you want. Uh, I think in fact sometimes you should just do a refresh um, the memory and refresh your, uh, your, your skill, you know, what's going on there. Uh, but that's a different story. While we going back to basics, um, there are a few very good reasons for that. Uh, one uh, is um, the the basics uh, is the very core, the very foundation of your skill. Uh, whether that is uh, pinstriping, airbrushing, uh, playing musical instruments, or or your martial arts, uh, whichever you name it, whatever that is, the very basics, the very foundations of uh, of of the skill you want to achieve is right there in the basics in the core of it and if you don't master that properly um, then all the fancy techniques and all the shit around you want to develop further as an artist or a musician or a martial artist you, you name it um, is going to be very very difficult if not impossible if your basics if your core foundation is not uh, is not properly done um, so that is I always like to uh, Go back every now and again, every few weeks, every couple of months. Go back to these very basics and practice that. Because the basics you need to have like that. You should be able to wake up in the middle of the night and just pull those basic lines with your eyes closed. Uh, once you're comfortable with that, you can move on further and further and use those techniques to develop your design and your skill. Second reason is uh, to go back to basics. Um, is for example uh, you are unable to pinstripe uh, for a period of time let's say I've been uh, I had a long um, airbrushing project that took me nearly three weeks uh, on top of that I work on the motorcycle so there was no opportunity or no reason for me to pick up a pinstriping brush um, and for that reason uh, I like to remind myself a little bit how to how to use it you know wake up those this muscle memory that skill that is that is already there but haven't been used for quite some time I mean, tomorrow I'm going to a big uh, car and motorcycle show and I have been pinstriping for about two or three weeks. I don't want to turn up over there and just uh, try to practice on the job on somebody's vehicle. Nah, that's not right. So today I'm going to just do some uh, basic pinstriping uh, exercises just to develop my skill or maybe wake up my muscle memory. That's there. And I'm going to take you on the journey with me. Um, so hopefully you can enjoy that and, um, and we can make some sense out of it. Uh, so once again, we go to uh, pinstriping basics, back to basics, so we can rediscover that core, that foundation uh, that will help us develop the skill as a pinstriper. Okay, so going back to basics, <coughs> remember on the very uh, few first episodes, I said that you can move your panel around to, uh, to suit your needs, whether you stripe in one way or the other. Well, today we're going to do a uh, complete opposite of that. Um, for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to tape down my panel just so, um, so I can't move it around. And I will need to move my body and my, uh, my hands to match uh, the panel, you know. Um, I won't be moving the panel at all. I need to move myself around the panel this time. Why are we doing this? Um, simply because... When you work in, for example, on a car, on the hot rod or uh, any, any other vehicle, <coughs> you're not going to pick it up and move it upside down just so it's easier for you to stripe around it. Uh, there are some areas, obviously, you can take the parts off of it and stuff, but if you're working on a, on a car show, you can't move the car around you. You need to move around the car. And there's a very few um, useful tips I'm going to show you today to make it easier. Um, also, you will come handy when it comes to build your design because sometimes you need to pull those lines the other way around than you're used to. So, uh, we're going to do that today. Um, we got a brush palleted with, uh, with yellow and, and let's do this. Okay, so the very first line we learned to, uh, to practice, it was a straight um, vertical line, uh, which, which you should know by now. <laughs> You've been pinstriping for over two months with me, so just press it down and pull it right straight down. 
so you have a beautiful straight line and you do number of them uh, next to each other try to keep the same distance try to keep the same line thickness and so on and so forth so you notice already um, we've been doing that for quite some time now just to mix it up a little bit <coughs> the first variation of this line we're gonna go from down towards up we're gonna do it upside down or uh, upstroke or downstroke whichever you want to call it whichever way you're looking at so the regular one once again you go this way and to make a variation of that line we're gonna go upside down so we're gonna start it exactly the same way and pull it up yeah looks easy but it does require some practice you know uh, as I said I've been out of practice myself for over three weeks so the lines may look a bit wonky once again you not move your panel around you you move your body around you so basically you need to turn your brush the other way around uh, not just uh, upside down but you need to turn it like uh, 180 degrees anchor yourself it may be not easy but just anchor yourself and try to keep a consistent line all the way up it is very rarely you'll be able you, you will have to pull this line but sometimes the spot is so tight on some vehicle or on the corner that you just need to um, pick up the line let's say you you able to to do a straight line halfway through but there's something in a way and you just need to pick it up from the other side so get to that tight corner and you need to just carry on and match it up to the other one so that's the first thing I wanted to practice uh, my lines are looking a bit wonky today again you know it's uh, I had no warm-up before I'm shooting this video but that shows you know practice makes perfect um, so I'm gonna just carry on doing this just uh, upstrokes today um, each and every one is looking better already because uh, you find out uh, the right spot to put your hands on and and find the right way of doing it so that's what I'll be carrying on just doing these lines uh, for uh, I don't know <laughs> the 20 50 depends how I feel like as until they look consistently and uh, and good enough uh, to what I like so uh, first variation of a vertical line you do it upside down yeah second variation of that straight line you're doing it uh, upstroke and downstroke you want to create a, a vertical line going left to right and then yeah, you guessed it lie right to left so it's the same principle you position your brush the way you want to if you can find the edge or a edge of a vehicle or your practice panel that's great you can start with this so you put your pinky on the edge of the panel so the light is, line is definitely straight and you do the same technique as you did before you pull horizontal line uh, the red palette over here and then you carry on the same way one next to it you got it and one more it's all practice you just need to uh, come back to it and practice you know I'm really uh, I'm really glad actually that my lines are not looking perfect today it shows that uh, two or three weeks without practicing every day uh, you can well <laughs> you see the results for yourself you know the lines are over the place but once I keep going it gets better so I do a couple more of uh, horizontal lines um, the technique is the same as we uh, as you do just regular line you press the tip of the brush establish your position and just pull a straight line keeping the same pressure and same consistency getting better and better once you get along <laughs> and obviously we got the, we got the line the other way around we're doing from left to right now we're going to go from right to left and it can get a bit tricky but that's why I, I tape my panel um, to my desk so I can't move it around I'm naturally just trying to move it 
well, I'm not going to move the car when I'm around, so I need to position my body. So if I'm striping from left to right, I'm kind of going this way. If I'm striping from right to left, I put my body kind of behind the camera. So it's easier for me to develop that line. And once again, just press it down. And pull. Yeah, that line was uh, really bad, but <clears throat> but that's what the practice is all about. Nothing is perfect at the same time. That's why I'm practicing today and not tomorrow on the actual show when a uh, customer is going to be watching, looking over my hands, you know. <laughs> so uh, once again, let's do it until I'm until I feel confident enough that I can I can pull it off. Well, this one is much better. And that's how that goes, just um, just practice those lines. No secret to it, just a lot of practice. Okay, so we got the uh, straight lines cover. Now um, we're gonna do the same variation of the uh, C curve. As you remember, we done a C curve, so you need to, as you know, turn your brush slightly in your hands. So you start here, you press it down, and once you go around the corner, you turn it slightly, and you do one after another, like that. Develop that bending of lines. So you do it one way and then you do it the other way. Try to make them consistent. Yeah, so we got this covered. That's easy. Right, uh, let's do the same thing, but do it upside down. Or using our um, upstrokes. Um, so again, turn the brush 180 degrees upside down, because sometimes you just can't work on it. Uh, any other way around and uh, try to do the same thing again turning your brush if you can I'm still try to anchor myself with pinky um, I hold my hands so it's stopping from shaking because I had too much to drink last night and the same thing just upside down still turning my brush exactly the same as I did before I'm just doing upside down strokes and the other way around same thing, turn your brush, press the tip down and turn when you go uphill. These are looking slightly better than these ones, but then again, I need to practice some more. And yes, you guessed it, we're going to do it um, horizontal way as well, so do it over here or over here, I don't know if you see better. So uh, same thing, press my brush down. Go around that corner. Notice that I'm not moving my panel around me. I'm moving my body around the panel. Yeah, and uh, free the other way around. Yeah, it's a simple exercise, but it really does develop your... Uh, basic skill it takes you to the next level which is what you need and the same thing vertical but do it it um, right to left so the opposite of this one see if I can find my way working around the camera um, let's see if I can pull it off standing it this way one two And free. Uh, it is more challenging maybe because your hand is not used to do that and um, and you kind of block in your view as well while you go well the way I'm standing anyway you're probably gonna see the same thing so let me move you over here um, when I'm standing I kind of blocking blocking what I'm doing with my with my with my hand so I can't really see so I kind of need to keep the hand the same way but try to position myself in a way that I'll be able to uh, to see what I'm what I'm trying to achieve here, so I go over here this way, slightly move to the left of it, 
and pull that line again. Yeah, and you just keep doing this until you are happy with the results you get. Um, <coughs> as I said, basics are incredibly important. Right, so the last part, as you, uh, yeah, you guessed it, the S-curve, uh, combination of the C-curve, but good in both ways. So I'm starting on top, twist my brush as I go along, and I got beautiful S-curve over here. I do a couple more, try to look them more or less the same, if possible. Yeah, you all remember this one. Repal it slightly. And there's an S-curve going the other way around. The opposite S-curve. You've been practicing these ones for uh, quite some time. So you'll be flying through these, all of you. I know you will. And yeah, let's do the same, same drill again. Same two variations of them. See if I can pull this off. So I'm going to go it upside down. <coughs> See if I can... Um, Get it flowing. Well, that's not looking too bad. One next to it. And then the other one. And then I'll try to do the opposite one. There we go. Same technique, you're just doing the upstroke instead of a downstroke. Yep, pretty happy with that so far. See, my if my straight lines didn't look half as good as these ones because that was the first time I was uh, I was literally first time I was holding the brush for over three weeks. So you see how much different that makes, even uh, ten minutes of practice. And um, let's do the S-curve on a horizontal level, this way. So I go left to right. Just like that. And now the inverted one as well. Same direction. So I press it down and I twist the brush in my hand as I go for it. Yeah. So far so good. And now the, uh, the last variation of it. It's the other way around. <coughs> I need to move you guys a little bit because you're in a way. Uh, so I put you over here, and I, again I need to move my body slightly around the panel. Um, the car, let's imagine that as a car, it's it's three and a half tons or whatever that is. It's sitting in the grass or in the garage, and I can't just turn around me. So I need to move around the car. And sometimes you find pinstripers they position their body in a way that you wouldn't believe. You know, they upside down on their knees. You know, one leg hanging hanging from the edge of that car just to pull this design. Just to make it easier for them so uh, once again the s curve going from right towards the left because not everything is straightforward sometimes you need to go around very difficult corners and some edges you know and the obstacles in the way like uh, handles and mirrors and all that kind of shit so There we go. And that's that. It's, uh, <coughs> it's a good fun, you know, to uh, go back to basics like this. And it's definitely beneficial for your designs. You will find that uh, after practicing, the, practicing this for quite some time, spend the whole afternoon doing this, 
different variations you'll find that uh, even building up your design on the panel which is going straight for the middle of it or one way or the other you'll be able to uh, pick up that line and just um, finish it off one way or the other you know if you want to do it but more straight in the end you can come back from one side and do this and come back from the other edge and do this there are no secrets at the moment for you this is all this is all happening you know there's a uh, you're completely in control of that brush and completely in control of the design you want to do and if you develop that um, then there is no uh, no boundaries you know you just go whatever the imagination can take you And remember to have fun with it, you know, you don't need to just practice uh, just just the basic lines, you know, straight C-curves and S-curves. You can practice anything else you want. You can throw a simple design and do it uh, upside down and do it sideways. Um, remember our uh, teardrops, you can practice them as well. So you press down really hard and once you go, you release that pressure to create that uh, perfect uh, teardrop design using one, one stroke. And you can do it the same thing, you can do it upside down, it's exactly the same thing, you just press it down harder and once you go up the hill, you release that pressure. I'm running low on paint now, but it can be easily fixed. And again, if the teardrop doesn't look perfectly the first time, you fix it, and you fix it upside down. I mean, why not? Much better. Same thing over here, press it hard, and once you go up the hill, release that pressure. Um, it's all part of it. You can play around with it. You know, you can uh, you can do it one way. You know, left to right, and you can do it uh, right to left. See, that wasn't great, so I go back to it and I press it down harder, and that's already better. Fix it up. Yeah, that's messed up, but it's practice. You know, we. Uh, we develop our skill just by practicing so remember to have fun with it <coughs> um, right now just think of uh, do a teardrop and curve it around slightly do it one way do it the other way and then do the same thing do the same thing but do it upside down so press it down hard Go around the corner and release that pressure. And yeah, just do it uh, left to right while you're cornering and do it uh, left to right. There you go, guys. That's it for today. There you go, guys. Uh, going back to basics. Um, it's very useful exercise um, even if I uh, do airbrushing and have a break from airbrushing I go back to basics if I uh, if I haven't picked up my bass guitar for a couple of weeks because I was on holiday or busy with some other stuff I pick it up and I go back to basics develop that finger dexterity again same thing with this little guy um, goes to any other brush as well but uh, don't be afraid of it you know practice the shit out of it until this little brush holds no secret from you. Uh, once you get there, you'll be able to pull any design anytime you want or any, any surface, you know, uh, prepared surface for the brush. And um, that will definitely uh, develop your skill as a pinstriper. Um, yeah, <laughs> get familiar with this guy in every direction. That's it, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, there's a lot more to come, so uh, keep checking my channel. And once again, any questions, any questions whatsoever, drop me a comment below, uh, get in touch, and as I said before, I'll be more too happy to, um, to help uh, if I can. Thank you very much for watching, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you next time.